Beyond the Buckles, real rodeo topics for cowboys and cowgirls. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Buckles. As always, I'm Cody Hart, along with Nathan Gillen, Blake Skaggs, got my partner and son, Briar Hart, here. And with us today is going to be an awesome episode, guys. We've got Mason Taylor, multi-time PBR World Finalist, good friend of ours, uh, recently acquired from uh, Carolina, went to uh, Nashville. Uh, we're going to talk about the ins and outs of the PBR teams. And uh, Mason, hey, glad to have you, buddy. Thank you all for having me. So if I get this right, you're just now coming back from an injury, right? You, 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 you miss, we missed you at the finals. I mean, the finals definitely wasn't the same without you there. I mean, you know, yeah. I, you know, I'm a big fan. So, but you hadn't you I, missed the finals, and uh, what what kept you out of the finals, and what are you coming back from now? Uh, I had hip surgery about um, three and a half months ago now, almost four months ago, and it was uh, it got to where I wasn't able to ride things that I should that I should ride day in and day out, and be in the conversation uh, with all them top tier guys. Um, it wasn't hindering me to the left, but I started drawing a lot of bulls and turn back into my hand, and that was something that it bothered. And it didn't hurt it on one or two, but, you know, making a short round all the time, getting on four bulls a weekend, it just took a toll on it. And that was something that me and Caitlin sat down and talked about and talked to Tandy and uh, Dr. Bird in Nashville, and we just thought it was the best thing to get it fixed. Yeah, it uh, – you know, you can get on them practice bulls all day long at the house and nothing hurts, but when you go get on – like you just said, four short rounders, four honky juice cats, you know, I mean, it's just going to yank the washers out of your ass. And if there, I promise yeah. you, if there is a weakness somewhere there, they will expose it because, you know, like I said, oh. you're at the top level and, and yeah. So, so all that's going good. You, you, you're back feeling healthy again. Uh, you're hitting training camp. Um, you got traded from, from Carolina, man. What a shocker. Yeah. You, you, two of the biggest <laughs> draft trades or picks or whatever in the history and we've only had two but in, in the history of the pbr draft man you you headlining it every year well what's gonna happen next year where are you going next year you know but i hope i can just stay in one jersey <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> one thing about it you, you you got a big laundry basket i hope because you've got carolina That's and now good. and now nashville so um yeah. but i think they traded you well i think i think justin did did a really good job of getting you over there i think you're gonna be a great asset but tell me, you know, what was the locker room? What's what's the locker room difference going to be like from from Carolina? You know, because Jerome and Justin, you know, they're both world champion bull riders, but they're two different kinda, riding styles. Yeah, two different riding styles. They come from different spectrums and and, and pretty much kind of eras, really. How was how, how's the how's the changeover been? Honestly, changing over has been it's more natural for me at Nashville. It's more of, okay, you do what you're going to do, but make sure that you do it with a purpose and you're going to do it, not just to do it. So, it you know, like we at Carolina, man, they busted our ass. We worked out. We had a training camp. We had Navy SEALs come out there and just bust our freaking ass. And, you know, that's all fine and good, which it really did help, sure. you know, with the mental side of it. But, you know, a gym ain't going to help you ride a bull or no learning how to jump or learning how to run the right way. ain't going to help you. It might help you get away from them, <laughs> but it ain't going to help yeah. you ride them. It's not going to help you, you know? with weight distribution to put weight on the leg when one does this. It's, it's not going to help with yeah. the reaction times. Cause, cause in bull riding, you can't think, or you're going to get bucked off. You've got to react. Yeah. You've got to, and, and only getting on bulls is going to fix that. And, but you've got to yeah. kind of know too what you're doing wrong. And yeah, and I, I'm guessing I can see Jerome being a little more laid back than than uh, kind of in your face, Justin. You know, uh. but Jerome was great, man. Like I oh, had absolutely. a couple questions. Yeah. I had a couple questions that I'd ask him because man, it just seemed like the same thing bucked me off every time. You know, like I just have a little bit of a tendency to get back a little bit, and once I get back, if I don't get forward next jump, they normally freaking throttle yeah. me. And he had some great input on, you know, maybe try to figure out some spurs that I can freaking put on that will help me grab a little bit deeper, help me grab and let go a little bit easier and stuff like that. And Jerome's great. Jerome and Tiffany are, 
Oh, awesome. absolutely. I love them to death. And I, I, yeah. I, wasn't, speak, I wasn't speaking no ill will. I was just talking uh, no. of uh, yeah. you know, the different coaching techniques that, that's coming into play. It is, different. it is different for dang sure. Like, Jerome, he's got Dalen, probably the greatest bull rider going right now, into his hand. He's got Dalen and then Cooper into his hand. You can't throw Cooper off. And there's awesome. the – yeah, there's but the – they go the other there. way too. Yeah, yeah. That's the one so, additional side. I think Jerome does a great job of matching them because he knows bulls, and Jerome did a great job of matching them guys up with them bulls, and I can ride them either way, and so can Cooper. So me and Cooper would flip flop. Okay, who wants to get on one that we don't want to get on today? Me and Cooper would trade out which one we didn't want to get on because Jerome's trying to win the games and put the for sures that are going to go left or the for sure that are going to go right on guys that are good into their hand. So it was just like me and Cooper were kind of flip-flopping and I got, I got a little irritated because I'd have to get on a hard one and then Cooper would get mad because he'd have to get on a hard right. one. And we're just sitting there like, man, this one dimension crap. Like I, I want to get on something that goes left. Yeah. And you can, when Cooper comes on, you can ask him about it. Yeah. I was a griping at him. Like, are you kidding me? Why can't I not get on something that goes left? I'm tired of getting on things that go right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so talk about that a little bit. The one dimensional side of it, you, as a bull rider, you know, you know, and, and you lived in, in my house for a little bit and back and forth. And we, we didn't, we never taught one dimensional. You had to get on them both ways. And, and, and I, I'm pretty sure that I've always said, I know I've always said that, you know, to be the best, you can't be one dimensional. Do no. you think yeah. you have to ride them left, right, up and down, doing cartwheels or running off down the daggum pin? You got to ride them all because you got to make a whistle to get a rewrite if they run off. But do you think that's helped or hurt the bull riding? The, 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 the level, the talent of bull riding, because with the draft and, and now the coach is picking the bulls and stuff because they're trying to win, is that hurt the overall product of, of bull riding? I, for the team side of it, no. It's great for fans, great for coaches, great for viewers watching, having a bunch of qualified rides. But, but when it comes it down to the, the UTB season, when it comes down to the UTB season, and you've been one dimension for six months now, and you ain't been on one that goes away from your hand, and you do draw one of them, you get in the short round because you've rode a couple more that turn back into your hand and but you're not up there and you get to pick what you want, but you have to get on a I'm busted or a preacher's kid or, mm -hmm. you know, one of them red demons, one of them just dirty rank some guns that are going to go both ways. You don't know if they're going to go into your hand or away from your hand, but you ain't been on one in six months. Yeah. I think it hurts your yeah. chances for sure. Yeah. I, I That's kind of what I was getting at is, is overall as a bull rider side of it, taking your side of it, 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 it may help the team, but, but wouldn't it be better for the team if, if all your all your teammates was not one-dimensional? They could ride them both ways anyways. And then it's basically, yeah. you know, who rides them more up and down more? Who rides the blow? Who, this bull ain't got a whole lot of kick, so this guy stays at the front more or, or hey, it gets better. It doesn't matter left or right. I mean, I think yeah. if – I mean, looking at it from last year, and we've only had one season, I think that the coaches could really emphasize on guys riding them both ways. Get get away from the one dimensional stuff, yeah. you know the, and not necessarily at the events, but like in in the practices that you go to. What? How does that go? Y'all get on? I mean, I, I can tell you for Briar. Briar, we got we got bulls, and we got you know we go buck bulls a lot. I he rides right handed. I think out of the ten twelve bulls that we have, There's we only, have one that goes to the right, and that's every once in a while. Everything else goes left. Yeah. yeah, no, I at same way at my house. Every bull I own goes left. Yeah. They are all out of left hand delivery and they all go left. I have one two year old that's out of the right that goes right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's not even a right yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, like yeah. he said all my life growing up, you can ride bulls that go into your hand no problem. It's what separates the boys from the men is when you step up and ride one away from your hand consistently. Yeah. And what people don't realize is when you do snap a bucker to the left, it is 10 times easier than snapping a bucker to the right. 
or yeah. vice versa, whichever hand you ride with. Yeah. Away yeah. from your hand, riding a bucker is way easier to me yeah. than it is into my It, it was yeah. me too. Uh, just, be, just, just because of the fact I was up over that, I rode right handed. I was up over that left shoulder, and that bull was carrying me with him. Whereas, in, I, when when they went into my hand, I had a tendency to want to wait just a little bit, be just a tick late in case you know they pulled a Cadrasozi on me and went went back left or tried to go up underneath my dress or whatever. I'd yeah. wait on them just a little bit and make them go ahead and commit, and then I could always, I felt like I could always catch them better into my hand. So I wanted to, when I nodded my head on every bull, regardless if I knew that bull or not, I played that sucker to go left. He was going to go away from my hand. And I knew if he, if he lied to me or something and went right, then I knew I could, I had a better chance of catching him into my hand than if I was playing him to go to the right. And then he goes, he goes left away from my hand. I, I was, I mean, my riding percentage went way down in the trash can, you know, when, (laughs) you know, silly rabbit tricks are for kids. (laughs) So, anyway, right. so, so coming from Carolina, coming over, uh, I know you're going to miss your teammates. You and Cooper's good buddies and all that. How did how did oh, Cooper how did Cooper feel about you getting traded, man? Cooper was a little little mad, and we were I was a little irritated too. But um, you know, we hugged it out like brothers do. Like he was right. like, you know, I'm gonna miss you, and I said I'm gonna miss you. But then he looked I'm at me and said, "I'm gonna kick your ass though." In the same token. <laughs> I said, come team time. I'm going to kick your ass. Ain't no friend. But I said, I know. I said, I feel the same way. So, yeah, we're good. Me and Coop, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, how about your new teammates? Let's talk about some of them. You're, you know, with Nashville, what's what's what y'all looking at? I mean, y'all look – y'all are looking pretty talk- good. <laughs> what's that? I don't get – I don't get to talk to them very much. They don't understand English. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of, kind of going to be a language barrier there, and, you, and you're going to be bilingual by the end of the season, I'm sure. So, Yeah, uh, no, but Kaiki, man, he I didn't know this, but Kaiki's such a bull guy. Like, really? I didn't know that. All he does is fuck bulls. Like, not very many people that, Like, he's not buying them or riding them. He's watching them, selling them, studying them. All he watches is bull riding videos and bulls. Like, that's okay. all he does. Cool. So, you can talk to him all day long if you want to talk about bulls. But if you don't want to talk about bulls, you ain't got very much to talk about. <laughs> right. And so, they're going to be in there. They're going to be talking a lot of Portuguese and stuff. And you're going to be going, hey, guys, can we uh, have a translator? Or can we get can, can, can we talk about this <laughs> stuff in English here so I can understand what the hell we're talking about? Get yeah. in the, the yeah. team vibe there, the team Concept. Do they provide a translator for for you know for them? Our trainer speaks Portuguese. Yeah, um, he can kind of he can tell us. Yeah, he's sore. Or, yeah, he's good and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hand can, signals, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, hey, wave yeah, it he off. Can, I don't know. <laughs> rub some dirt in it. Walk it off. Yeah. Uh, Be like you know he baseball. doesn't understand. It. He goes, excuse me. so do you think that you know you you go into nashville uh you got a new coach looking forward to that i'm sure uh kind of a new look on things gonna you think that you're gonna benefit i'm sure you're gonna benefit from justin uh not that you didn't benefit from jerome by no means jerome and tiffany but um you kind of you kind of, I mean, you've been the most traded guy in the in the PBR team. So, um, I, I think Matt Triplett bounced around a little bit too, but uh, <laughs> not by not not at the level that you was. So, so I think you're going to benefit from getting Jerome's insight and now going over to Justin's, and you've had other teammates. Uh, tell us a little bit about Silvano, three time world champ. Uh, everybody's got the, you know, obviously <clears throat> got the negative impact you know because he takes long in the shoot and and uh he played the points game to win you know win a lot of his world titles if not all of them he's kind of got a bad deal out there you can you kind of tell us a little about him about you know in the locker room is is he that bad guy no silvano's probably the greatest guy in the locker room the coolest to be around like he's just smart like that's like giving a kid a textbook and all the answers are in the back of it. And you get mad at the kid for slip for flipping to the back and looking at the answers and getting a hundred on the test. Right. He figured out a way to win a million dollars and do it better than anybody else. And everybody got mad at him. And 
what's crazy to me is, is that at practice, when Silvano gets on, Silvano takes his rap, slides up, nods. Okay, like here's, he's a million, fast. here's a million dollar question. Why does he sit in there so long and wait for that clock to get down to 15 and then go? I have no Is it just idea. To piss off the powers that be at PBR? <laughs> I'm not going to say yes or no, but in my head, yeah, he's pretty much telling you, screw off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he's giving the proverbial fuck you, you know? <laughs> yes. I got and. It. He is the coolest guy, and he's the most knowledgeable guy. Like, you know, he explained to me one time that because I was having trouble into my hand and I didn't know why I was getting left out of the buck and shoot, and, you know, he just broke it down to where I can actually understand Savano. Savano speaks very good English, yeah. and Savano can – he understands bull riding. And he just, like, the rap that he's got from everybody – that's just on TV. Yeah. Okay. That's not Silvano every day okay. at home or, you know, in a team format. Like, Silvano's a great guy. Good, good. I, and I, I figured yeah. he would be. I figured, you know, yeah, everybody's perception over the TV just, you know, until you know the facts are in the locker room, you, you really don't know. And that's what yeah. that's what Beyond the Buckles is about, right? We're going to get – I don't give a shit what's on top of the bed. We're going to get under the covers and get dirty. <laughs> So, <laughs> so let's let's talk a little bit. Um, how, you, how you think you think your team's gonna do good? How, how's the rest of the team riding? They they riding good? They jiving? Man, uh, camaraderie. Is there a yeah, chemistry? We have a solid. We have a solid group of guys, and even though we can't understand each other some of the times, man, like on the back of the buck and shoots and while we're freaking practicing and all this, whenever we get off and we do stay on a good one at practice, man, they're just as in, they're just as hyped up and they're just as energetic as my team that was over in Carolina. Uh, I might not be able to understand them all the time, but we know eight <laughs> seconds and we know that wasn't good. So, you know, it's, uh, the camaraderie is really good over at Nashville. So, so the draft through with the Nashville guys, y'all picked up a couple of young guys in the draft yep. and uh what's the what's the practice squad looking like do you get in on that do you get to weigh in on on team team thoughts or is justin just ramrodding the show or well know? caden loud i actually told justin about caden i told him to watch him i told him he'd be a good one for us to get in young and uh should he been show on the, the roster and, though or should just, he been put on the practice uh, roster should, should he have been um, – you think he I should think have put, put on the productive roster or, or maybe moved into the, the practice squad and then moved up eventually? Um, the way that they – that we had to move some things around for us to draft him, he had to be on the protected roster. I got you. So because – other people looking at him too. There was other people looking at him. Like, we thought Cleet was going to take him, and he had the pick right before us. Right. And, shit, once Cleet didn't want him, we was like – Oh my God! Yes. So they, Cleet picked Creek Young, yeah. and then once that opened up, Justin texted me at the draft that day and said we got him, and we had the next pick, and we picked him. And man, Caden is just—he's a damn good bull rider. And the one thing that we've noticed, or that I've noticed, and I told Justin to watch for is it don't matter what way. Caden rides him just as good to the left as he does to the right. So that right. was a big. Thing. My question huh? is, how, you know, some of these young guys coming up. How, I mean, obviously, there's going to be that learning curve, and I and I think that's a great benefit to of of the team deal is is that it shortens that learning curve to get into the PBR because you're going to get on. Yeah. You're going to, you know, of course, if, when you make it to the big show, the UTB, and you get to the short round, right? There's going to be some twenty two and a half, twenty three pointers. You know, I've seen a couple twenty four pointers in there. The man killers them the yeah. beast, you know. They, they, they're they're going to expose your flaws. So I yeah. think that the the team deal is is going to shorten that curve a little bit for them. But do you think he how, how short is that going to shorten it for for a guy like Caden coming in and and been going to all these bull team deals and 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 the stock contractors picking the bulls for him because they want to win too. Yeah. You know, it, and that's that's a that's another big point of. You know, the team deal nowadays, kind of the team deal has ruined a lot of yeah. bull riding. 
um, in the fact of because I've played it. I'm a mm-hmm. part of it right now. I take yeah. Bulls to yeah. the Bull teams, and yeah. if I ain't got Caden Loud, Austin Richardson, or John Cranberry on my team, I won't go. Yeah. Like, if I do not have them kids to come get on a bull that goes into their hand, mm-hmm. I've played into it. Because I'm playing Mr. Stock Contractor that day, and there's a lot of money up for grabs. But that's kind of ruined bull riding, I think, because now kid nowadays kids – grow up getting to get on what they want. Yeah. Getting to get on stuff that always goes left and getting paid thousands of dollars for it yeah. before they even hit a professional level. And I think that that's where you're talking about the learning curve is going to come in to, for some, it's going to be short and minute, like for John and Caden. Yeah. Like I think it'll be just a short learning curve to where they just had to get used to something blasting out of there like a ball of fire. Yeah. Some other kids, I bet you it's going to be very, (laughs) very long. Like it's going to, they're going to have to start from square zero again to learn how to ride one that goes away from their hand after the team series. And to me, that sucks because why not learn to do it now? But the bull team side of it, you want the bull that bucks the hardest right there and you want the best guy that can ride that thing into his hand. You know, you get a 21 and a half, 22 point bull that, that somebody can ride five or six seconds, you can get a good bull score or, and get that rider yep. time added in there too. You know, you can't take a 19 yep. pointer and they make eight seconds. That's not a, you're not, you're probably not going to win much. But, yeah. you know, these guys oh. are used to getting on that. I, I wonder, you know, because the bull team bulls, they're, they're pretty, pretty even. They're pretty rider friendly. And I hate riders. They don't friendly, really right? change nothing up. Yeah, they're pretty common. They yeah. stay flat. Yeah. They're not going to be a cool whip or, or something that's going to get them front feet off the ground. It's going to leap seven feet over there and then kick over his head and swallow his ass with no blinker. You know? Yeah. They're, they're going to – They haven't gonna, been on a ride. <laughs> yeah. They're going to expose the flaws. And, yes. And, you know, then you've got the, the, the weaker side of the generation of all the lookout guys, the look-off guys, man. What's, yeah. up, with, what's up with all that? Let's get your take on that because we just, we just had an episode – uh, a little earlier, and uh, we talked about the look off, man. What, what's up with these guys? Do we not razz them and give them shit and call them pussies and everything I will, else? And, the the shit talking in the locker room that y'all used to have is not there no more. Um, wow. And I'm going to be as nice as I can about it because I don't <laughs> want no one getting mad at me because I'm still in the locker room right, with right. everybody. But no, that's a thing now. If you get beat, just step off of him or if you don't like what he's going to do or you're scared of him, just step off of him and live to fight another day. And really? that's something. Wow. That, that's sad. That's really, sad. that's something that I don't agree with just from being with the guys I was with growing yeah. up you yeah. and then Cody J, you know, yeah. when I was 16, 17, grabbing a hold of me, like that was just something we didn't do. Yeah. And now there'll be situations like you're saying where like You'll just get, I mean, tipped so far oh, into your hand. Yeah. Well, there's no point of report no return. Tricked, like, hey, he's going right. Oh, I'm going to get over there. Nope, he tricked yeah. you, went left, and you're just hanging off yeah. the side of him. Yeah. You and got, there's no yeah. getting back. Yeah, when your bloomers are yeah. exposed, check you out. Can. Yeah, you can't, you can't get back. If you, you can, can if you don't yeah. want to get your gut stomped, yeah, you can get off and yeah. don't let him trick you again. Yeah. yeah. But – the sitting right in the middle of them and just getting your head snapped up once and just freaking out and yeah. getting off is something that I've never, never seen until I don't it. as of late. I don't understand because yeah. I, I, I was always uh, taught and, and believed that if you're man enough to nod your head, you're man enough to try. You don't get hurt riding yeah. bulls, you get hurt getting off of them rather than bulls. That ain't no shit. Whatever, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's where everybody gets hurt, you know. Uh so how do you so how do you fix it? How, how do you how do you fix the the, the look off it? Or is there or is there a fix? And maybe this is a fad, and we've got to ride it out until we get tougher guys in there. What is, do you see the end of it anytime soon? It's crazy because when them guys do want to stay on, and that's all of us. Yeah. When we all want to stay on, we'll try till the absolute bitter end. Mm-hmm. But it's okay now to if you don't like what he's gonna do, and he snaps you up and beats you a half a jump, you can get off of him, and nobody razzes you, nobody 
<laughs> Jack so, so it's acceptable goes, now. Hey, I, I yeah. can tell you this. It's, it's acceptable because you get two more that weekend. Well, yeah. you lived no, with us for a no. while, so you know in our household, it's way opposite. We get made, if you do that, if you do that, it you get made fun of <laughs> for it. You oh, don't yeah. live it down at all. Well, I know, I know. Back when when I was when I was going with JW, because I, I traveled with him quite a bit when I was younger, uh, you know. And I don't want the religious people to get all fussy with me and everything. But whoever rode the best in our house, I was was growing up, got to be God for the week. I could make him go make a glass of tea, or he could go on feet. He, if I beat him, he could go make. I'd have, I could tell him go make me a glass of tea, or you get to feed all week, you know, or you got to go to work with dad or something, you know. Um, so there was that rivalry, and I, it's, it's hard yeah. for me to believe that that is not as, as cocky and arrogant and headstrong as all these damn bull riders are, or where they used to be anyway. Obviously, they're not now, uh, not in all of them anyway. Uh, there, there's none of that. There's none of that rivalry. There's none of that, you know behind the scenes competition of I kicked your butt like you and Coop, you know. Y'all got a good thing going. I you know, I love you brother, but I'm gonna I'm gonna kick your ass next season, you know. And that's something that he's taught me. Like between Cooper, Dalen and Dalton, them three guys right there, I wanna beat them so bad every time when I show up in there because they want to beat me. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, that's just us being brothers and us just yeah. that's what yeah. traveling partners do. Yeah. You want to be able to razz that some bitch because yeah. he is ninety one and he was eighty nine. Yeah. Well if you cut loose or maybe if he was <laughs> yeah. just this good, yeah. you'd be ninety one. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Dalton does it. Mr. King of the nineties does it to me all the time. Yeah. He's ninety three every freaking weekend and I'm eighty eight or eighty six or eighty seven and he's you just ain't that good. Hey, how many, you know, time, he, how many actually, times how many times last season did Dalton get reared back and get his helmet knocked off? Seemed like almost every episode he's getting jerked down in his helmet, go flying or something. Man, I did, do we need to write him a map and show him directions how to get to the front? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, even if even if we did, he'd stay back there just to prove us wrong oh, that I, he I, can't hang. I, 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 I can I can see that. Well, see that's the cockiness, hey, arrogance of a bull rider, right? That that's yeah. we need more of that. I mean, we need more of you guys. Yes. Um. But yeah. We need more Dalton's back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's well, generational? Yeah. Like the new generation coming up? Do you think that's just it's acceptable for them to step off or just kind of not, you know, be that tough? Well, I don't know if like the the jumping off that they've always had or that we've always had because I mean I can include myself because somebody's gonna get mad at everybody's me. Everybody's done it. Everybody, I did it. Every, and yeah. but, but when I walked out of the arena and I knew I did it. I, you can lie. Oh. Let's look at it this way. You can shit the fans, but you can't shit the players, son. They know what's going yeah. on. And and you yeah. definitely can't lie to yourself because you know the truth. You know if you got weak or – and, and I promise you, there was a time or two and probably more than that because I try to forget all them. But there's once or twice that I do remember that I got weak. I got scared. Yeah. You know, and, and check the hell out. And because bull riding is mental. You know, and you, you get in a bind or, or maybe a little bit in a bind and you know this bull, maybe the reputation of the bull or something, and get you in a bind and you check out. But I promise you, when my feet hit the ground, I was my worst critic, man. I called myself every oh. name in the book, and it was the worst feeling you could ever have, period. And I let myself down. And, yep. I mean, the, I didn't care what the bull riders behind the chutes in the locker room called me because it damn sure wasn't no worse than what I was already doing myself. I was beating myself up. But I don't see I had that one, nowadays. One time last year that I flat jumped off of one, landed on my two feet, and when I landed on my two feet, I felt like the biggest piece of shit mm -hmm. on the earth. Like, it was Medicine Man. It was J-Dub's yeah, bull, yeah. and cracked him out of there, went right, went to jump forward and run down the bucking chutes, and I just got off. <laughs> I just flat stepped off on my feet in a, in a game, and I felt like the biggest pussy there was on the face of the earth. Yeah. And I don't ever want that feeling again. I've I've had it. I can probably count on one hand how many times I've had that feeling. Yeah, me too. And I never, I never wanted to have it yeah, again. It's the, I don't want it again. Like that's the word. And Dalton, even what the fuck was you doing? Yeah, like you why did you yeah. off? Yeah. Like and 
you know, and I'm sure Dalton's had a couple times where he can say that too, and Cooper's had a couple times where he can say that too. And I think if you've ever run your Dalen's run your hand in a bull rope, you was ever a, a professional yeah. level or even amateur level. If you've run your hand in a bull rope and got on more than fucking twenty twenty five bulls, you've looked off at at some time yes. or another. Everybody's done it, but it's the consistency and. The That's the new fact of it. That's now that it's it, it kills me that I that that it seems like it's it's just accepted now. Is it because it, that, is it because it's it, so much money available that that you know because what what are the events paying now thirty five to fifty and then the majors I don't even yeah. have major numbers. majors well I don't think we have any more majors yeah, but, but when we did have majors is a hundred thousand yeah and what are they four of it four 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 mm-hmm. rounds or whatever. They yeah, three long three rounds to, and a short round. So and and you could ride you could ride three or four to three out of four and win a hundred thousand. But if you yeah. hung on to your first one and, and did the old day money drag, you may not be healthy enough to get on the next three. Does yeah. that play in? So that plays into it a a bunch, and I feel like that that's where it started coming at was people telling us, "Well, it's stupid money down nowadays." You have to be a businessman. You have to make businessman decisions. It's not just the old rodeo cowboy right. day dragging for fifteen hundred bucks no more. And you're getting on way better. Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna say way better. I mean, I'm gonna say way better stock. Not not say way better stock, but there's just more of them. Because back in my day, yeah. I mean, there was bruisers and and cool whips and and flapjacks and riding solos and all that back in my day, but. There wasn't – when you showed up to a PBR bull riding and they had 75 bulls back there, 50 of them might have been that way. Where now there's 75 of them in the re-ride pen stack. Yeah, more, yeah, but you, know. you may be doing the day money drag – or may have done the day money drag for 1500 bucks, but it's for 50000 now. Yeah, you can do. You can look yeah, at it that way. But Hang on. You look at it, and that's how we look at it. Yeah. That's how – I promise you, if you watch Dalen Swearingen, when that somebody ties his hand in there, it ain't coming out until yeah. he wants it to come out yeah. or he stomped out. Yeah. yeah. And that's something I admire. And that's why I love being on his team because it made me try even yeah. harder. Yeah. Because seeing someone like that that is that committed, I'm that committed. Like I know I'm that committed. Right. And when you're that committed all the time, you do see other guys that aren't so committed all the time. Yeah. But and I feel it's like it's off, because I think it could be an easy habit to form. And, and it oh, could yeah. be a hard one to break too, right? Like right. you might have, maybe you was a little hurt or something, and and you know, and maybe you got an egg broke in you, and you're a little gun shy coming back. Maybe you got your helmet knocked off and your teeth knocked out, jaw broke, whatever. And you've got one that's got a lot of up and down going. You might be just a little hesitant coming back until until that until that egg heals back up, and you're getting a little bit of a bind and go, I, I, I don't want to sit out for three months with wired jaw again. I'm gonna check out. Maybe that See, plays into it some, and then that creates that bad habit. And then when you do get confidence and get back and you get in that bind, it just seems like it's easier to keep it going than it is to break it, maybe. Yeah, because everybody's going to – it's freaking bull riding. Mm-hmm. But you're going to get hurt. And yeah. I used to hate the saying growing up, it ain't if, but it's when. You know, I mm-hmm. freaking hate that saying. Like, it pisses me off. But it, there is some truth to it. Well, that's something it as a bull rider you have to It can happen, accept. and it is going to happen. But you have to be willing to take it. And I don't think that, like back in y'all's day, y'all had, what, 45 guys in the locker room, Cody? We did, yep. 35, of them, five, 35 of them were willing to take what's coming. Absolutely. Now, uh, you know, you go nowadays, ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. nowadays, we have 35 in the locker room. Twelve of them are willing to take it every time. I would argue that that's more like you know you got thirty five in there, you've got like six. Yeah, yeah. I would. I, mean, I would <laughs> actually argue that. I watched the PBR finals this year and 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 went down and watched and, uh, yeah, I was you know, <laughs> wow, uh, you're you're at the PBR World Finals and and it and it was it was one of the Brazilians because like when the Brazilians first come out right they come over here they man they were hungry right they come from the poverty stricken streets yeah. of Brazil and them boys were hungry and I you know no offense Mason but they come over here and they was kicking y'all's ass 
I mean, oh my they, god, them boys were and, hungry, and they meant it. They lived on the same. They probably still live on the same ranch, and they're hungry, right? They ain't looking off. They're trying they to make a better are. life for their family and us. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm gonna put myself in this deal too because I'm a white boy, and I, I don't want to get racist or nothing. But we white and we American, and maybe we thought we was a little prima donna and, and didn't yep. have to. It, it was everything come easy. We could go to bull riding whenever we wanted to. It was in our backyard. They don't have that. Yeah, no, no, they, they got to travel halfway that. across the world over here. Leaves their family and everybody behind. Them boys are hungry, and that's what kills me. Is now at the finals, I see a lot of the, I see several, if not more Brazilians, look off than I did the white boys. <laughs> you know, I mean, what what it, it, it so I'm, I'm what I'm what I guess what I'm saying is the virus is just not an American virus. It's in it's in everywhere in, in infested Brazil too. It's it's dang sure it's dang sure a virus that is. I don't know why I couldn't tell you when it started. And I just, I know that there's a bunch of us in there that don't like I'm saying there's 10 or 12 of us that we're in the fight every time we nod our head. We can't control what them other guys do, but no, since we're on a podcast and we're talking about it, yes, yeah. there is them guys in there that do it. Yeah. And we wish that it was, me and Dalton, we jack around all the time. We're like, man, we, we're we riding in the wrong era. The money's great now, but wouldn't it be fun to ride with Justin McBride, Cody Hart, <laughs> Ross Coleman, JW, all them guys back in the day? Like, wouldn't it just be freaking awesome? And, you know, like, that's what we always talk about is old school's better. Yep. We need more old school back in there, you know, because old school was fucking cowboy one. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to be every day. Yeah. They never back down from a fight. Nope. And y'all got the coolest freaking stories to tell because y'all didn't give a shit about nothing. We had better music like, too. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, just, we we understand that you know we need more old school back in there, uh, and it's been it's been since JB left that you know it's kind of lost the edge off in the locker. Room. All right, you yes. brought up you brought up JB. Why? Because I've heard several different stories as to why JB left, right? And I and I, I can understand and see why why he might have left. But you know, I heard that they they wouldn't let him smoke in the locker room. The reason why he left, and then then I heard he oh wanted, they they you know, tried. he wanted to go rodeo with his kid and all this. And then I heard there was some stuff went down in Florida that uh you know that might have been the end of it. Do you do you yeah. have an opinion or or do you know? What, what, why JB left? What was the real reason? I think it was a lot of, a lot of shit accumulating over his 14 or 15 year yeah. career. I think it was longer than that, but oh, absolutely. you know, I think so too, because I, I held it to end of my career, oh, oh, seven, oh, eight. I mean, I, I remember being in the locker room with JB. He was just yeah. a young yeah. punk so. over there smoking cigarettes. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Uh, you know? <laughs> Going to Green, right. going to Charlotte or Greensboro over there and then going to his house to a party and I'm I'm the old guy, you know. I'm the guy that's already graduated. <laughs> like I felt like I went to a high school party and I'm like yeah. what in the world, you know. But he uh I just think it was a lot of stuff accumulating over the years and then they did. They tried to make it to where he couldn't smoke in the locker room and they said one I remember I can't remember what security guy it was, but security guy come in there and J B you can't smoke. I already sm I already smell it. Like, if you light another one up, we're going to find you. He just took one out of his pocket, put it in his mouth, lit it up, said, find me. <laughs> I mean, he, And that's uh, why we like, all love JB right there. If they can find him about like, smoking cigarettes in the locker room, I think they should start finding him for looking off. Ah, you can't do that. It's, a, it's kind of a consultant game. If they look off, they don't win, so they don't yeah. pay you. Sponsors can drop but you. It's but it's also hurting the, yeah. the their fans. Their fans want to see them ride bulls. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's any way you could find somebody for looking off, or you know, it's not like golf where they could where they could start stroking Patrick Cantlay or something. You know, for taking for too, taking long, too yeah. long between us. I don't think you could yeah. do that. Now, the shoot clock is another deal. Should we shorten it or should we make it longer or just start think, disqualifying them faster? Or? I think once it gets past 20 seconds, you shouldn't get a re-ride. I, I feel that, 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 that was my thoughts, right? And I made a post about this on social media one time, and it blew up. And, I mean, 
it was it was <laughs> wow I, I got called everything <laughs> in the damn book and uh but i'll try to explain a little better now so and, and i'll see get your opinion on it mason because you're in there so you're put on the clock it the bull's standing fine you're in there um now about time you slide up and you you're on the clock you got to slide up that bull squats but you've got an odd because it's down to five seconds, three seconds, two seconds. It's time to go or or you're going to get disqualified. And you nod your head. And that bull, because that bull is squatting or down in the front and you got to take him that way, that bull leaves, hips himself or falls down or something. I don't think you should get a re-ride. I think that should be a no score because <coughs> that bull give you – ample amount of time standing good and fine to get out of there where he wouldn't have hipped himself you taking long yes. in there caused that bull to stumble or, or hip himself or something leaving out of there because you 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 know uh, i'm not saying you but whoever it is had the rope pulled into him hocked in him sitting there mashing on him and wallering on him and you know uh i think that caused it yes and there is them instances to where somebody jacks with one so long that man, they're bred hot now. Mm -hmm. Like they don't like being in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the most dangerous spot for us Absolutely. to be is in that bucket. Because you're surrounded by and steel and it ain't given. They're, they're bred hotter now. They do not like being in there. They're so bad already now that like they're ready to just do what they're bred to do. So the longer we sit in there and fuck with them, yeah, the mm -hmm. longer they're going to, yeah. I mean, it's going to get worse by the freaking second. Yeah. Do you so, think some of them guys that maybe they maybe don't like this bull? We talked about this earlier. They yeah. get off of them. They don't like them, but they know this oh. bull is kind of rough in there. And, and, uh, you slide up there and, and I know the camera cameras can't catch it all the time. You're just kind of poking him with a spur down there to make him jack around in there and blow up. Oh, yeah. So you can get a re because you, you looked at the re-ride list and you know, you got oh, yeah. Copenhagen cupcake back there, dream boat that you're going to be, you can be a, a, a 90 point and be 90 on and, 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 you know, eat a damn ding dong while you're riding a daggum thing, you know, other than hey. the man killer in there, you kind of gouge him a little bit and get, get, get a re-ride and then go get on cupcake. Hey, I, I did it one time. I had, uh, you know, funny story I have too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I had a, uh, I had legit at my first ever cow, last cowboy standing. You remember the All big the legit scary come from uh, yeah. uh, Judd Lafew. Yeah. Yeah. That great big scary gray horn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, great big scary yeah. look your ass man. Yeah. Well, he's in the back alley, and I'm trying to put my rope on him. He's just tearing shit up, like. <laughs> And I was sitting here trying to psych myself into it, like, I'm going to ride this big, scary son of a buck. And <laughs> Kate Harrison come over, and she interviews me right before I go to sit down on this thing. And I just went on ahead and opened my big, fat mouth that I was going to be the new JB Dragon Slayer and just ride this thing. On national television. <laughs> on national television. This is what the first time I ever learned how to not stick my foot in my mouth ever again. So I sit on this big, scary son of a gun, and he is just trying to eat everything, the camera guys, everything <laughs> right here. So I was like, man, instead of me trying to ride this big, scary son of a buck, I pull my rope, and I just gig him in the side uh -huh. and cracks him in there. And when he comes up, he just breaks the right tip of his horn off and starts bleeding, and they throw a re-ride flag. And I said, "Woo!" <laughs> Mason just said, won the lottery. <laughs> Hey, I thought I won the lottery until I walked over there and my re-ride was fucking wild goose of HDs. Oh, and I said, I probably should have just got on oh, legit. Oh, it. <laughs> it, it, it backfired on you, didn't it? Uh, Arma man. come back and bit me in the ass real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it didn't wait in no time. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, like, back to your point, there's there's guys that do that. Like, yeah. that's a real thing. Yeah. They don't like what they got, and they know he's terrible in the box. So they'll just take a little extra time in there mm -hmm. trying to get a re-ride, trying to make him lay down, yeah. trying to make him Expose his hurt. faults so they can but, get a re-ride and move on. And, yeah, then there's the point of no return where you're in there jacking around so long that you get ODO put don't give a shit no more. Yeah. Put now yeah. you have to nod on this motherfucker. Yeah. And, and you, you sat there him, and You got 30 seconds long. to take him, yeah. You got 30 seconds to get this sorry piece of junk in the box that you've created. <laughs> 
freaking stacked off <laughs> stacked off in the box now now you have to not only muster up enough in your head to nod on him now you have to try yeah and then there's them guys that just know they have to nod but they're just going to get off right there yeah why because even they nod? don't nod him why anymore. even nod at that point right i mean yeah this episode of Beyond the Buckles is brought to you by our friends at Sunnyside Graphic Design, Cactus Rodeo, Print and Stitch Company, DEL Cattle Company, and Blake Skaggs Bucking Bulls. So, what's the difference in Vegas and Fort Worth? Uh, it's still it's still the World Finals. You know, there's always World Finals energy, but there's only one feeling in Las Vegas with a packed out crowd in a T-Mobile arena that is just screaming their freaking heads off. Yeah. I don't care how many people you put in Fort Worth, Texas. It ain't, it ain't Vegas. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I don't same. think, I don't think it is either. I, you know, and I've rode in, the only thing I can compare it to, cause I never rode in the finals in, in, in Fort Worth or Dallas or anywhere, but you know, it, the finals was always in Vegas, but Tufts bull riding every year. <clears> that was, <laughs> That was that was as close to the PBR World Finals as you could get, and it had a lot of atmosphere. But man, Vegas—that's where dreams are either made or shattered, and and you know the glamour, the glitz, the lights, the 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 history of Vegas, and and I, they can talk about the history of Fort Worth, and who cares, you know, Fort Worth. I mean, I'm Worth. from I'm I'm from <clears throat> here. Like this yeah. is where I've lived since I was seven years old. I've been to Fort Worth thousands of week times in yeah. and week out riding at the stock show or riding at the stockyards sneaking in the bars Bob, on in Cowtown sneaking in <laughs> bars all that like it's it's fun and it is historic it's cowboy town you know you don't get mm-hmm. looked at funny if you're wearing a cowboy hat there I get it but it's not me growing up I always Welcome to the 1999 PBR Bud Light Cup in Las Vegas, Nevada on TV. Yeah. Like, yeah. that yeah. is yeah. where yeah. the PBR Finals yeah. is from. It's where it should be. And I understand that we're moving and the PBR is getting bigger and the team finals are in Vegas now and we're expanding. And I know that change is good, but, man, when you're 90 – in Vegas, and everybody's screaming. That's a feeling that you'll never forget. Like that's a feeling of a lifetime. Oh, you ain't, you ain't a kidding, and and you actually have to be to, to know what it feels like to be ninety and in in the Thomas and Mac or or even the T-Mobile Center, which I never rode in the T-Mobile Center because it basically I think it was a hotel back then. But uh, <laughs> you know, Thomas Thomas and Mac was the that was a shit man. Uh, going up, walking up the red carpet, going in the locker room. You know, you'd see. Growing up, I could see, you know, when, when the NFR moved out there in 86, man, I was, you know, 8 to 10 years old thinking, wow, I want to do that. And then when you actually get to go out there and do it, it's it's something. And then to be successful in that arena, and it, it the, with it being in Vegas, it's just a whole different atmosphere. The yeah. locker room had a different vibe. Uh, I, I it is, like, man. You know. Um, I felt like the, the World Finals, like, in Texas is just – just another event. Yeah. Like it's just not. Yeah. That's it's what, not there. That's and the what people, it feels like for me. The people that they watch rodeos all the time, but Vegas people that, and the energy they provide is a whole other atmosphere. Well, you'd get people from Fort Worth, Texas, to go to go to go to Vegas Vegas. to watch the rodeo, and it's part or the or the finals or whatever. And it's on vacation, and they get drunk and party, yeah. And yeah. raise hell and gamble they get, they, and get wild. Because yeah. but let's let's gamble. let's. let's, let's I, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas is what they say, other than crabs, and I hear that shit comes back. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, you know, it, you, could, you had an excuse to get wild. Right. People that live in Fort Worth or Texas, they go to Fort Worth, it's just like going to the neighboring town or going, going to the grocery store, you and know. They and they got to drive go back home. home. Yeah, and they go back home. That's like, that was our you know? family vacation when I was two years old, yeah. where I first met yeah, you, yeah. and then until it moved to Texas, you know, that was our vacation, and and moved to Texas, we got rid of our season passes. It, it's in May, and other when we're rodeoing, that's a busy time of the year for us. And I feel like the fans just they ain't 
Yeah, I mean, I don't, got, they don't dig it as much as when it was in Vegas. Yeah, I don't. Well, you I, got the Red Steagle songs and and the Chris yeah. Lee songs. It's December in Vegas and the finals is in town. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's and, it's, it's, yeah. What's your point? Like, what? How do you feel about the World Finals being in May now, and being so condensed season now instead of getting that break? Uh, now, Mason. Uh, man, it don't like it doesn't really affect me as much as like. I know that y'all would probably want me to say because <laughs> at the end of the day, they're still giving a gold buckle away and right. a million freaking dollars, and that's something that I've wanted that I've wanted since I was four years old. Mm-hmm. And you know, whether it's in May, whether it's in November, whether it's a year long, whether it's six months long, I'm gonna try my fucking ass off to win that thing every single year. Oh, yeah. And would I rather it be in Vegas? Well, hell yeah, because I love gambling. I'm a <laughs> dice guy. So I, I, they got better gentlemen's better. clubs in Vegas too. I hear. I don't know. Hey, there ain't nothing better. There ain't nothing better than to fucking show up in Vegas, snap your first round bull, and then stay up all night and gamble and hang out with your buddies and freak like that's just the atmosphere. Yeah. Does that yeah. actually like, happen? Because I know back in my era, it did. Right. I mean, I, I remember days of of during the PBR finals and. And going, I'd go to bed at 11, 30, 12 o'clock, midnight, you know, leave the tables because we'd all meet like the Gold Coast or somewhere. And that's where all the, that was kind of the riders hang out back then, you know, everybody'd go eat meat and hang out and drink and party and, and stuff. And there, there was more than one occasion that I remember Razor, Jim Sharp, sitting at the same, I'd, I'd walk by him going to my room at midnight. And I would get up to eat breakfast at 8 a.m. the next morning, and he's still sitting in the same damn chair in the same damn clothes <laughs> at the same table playing the same game and just drunk off his ass. And then go go snap one for 90 and, and win a round or something. You know, does that still happen? Is it, is it or is it – because I've seen kind of the new mentality of, you know, because back then it was, you know, after the bull riding, you went to the bar and you chased the buckle bunnies and you did all this and that. And but I, over the years, I've it, it seems to me that it's progressed into more of we got to go hit the gym, we got to work out, we got to take this shit serious. It's uh, like more, more athletes, like yeah, more of a t- fitness t- t- yeah. and and health. Yeah, like and that's what I was going to ask. It you, is. How many? How many actual cowboys right now? Thirty got thirty five guys are cowboys. How many of them can ride horses, rope, doctor, and then? How many of them are just going and working out? 10%. I mean, there still is, there still is in select few, you know, like okay. there's yeah. like Colton Fritzlin, Jesse Petri, uh, Chase yeah. Doherty, um, Dalton, me. Yeah. Um, and I know Eli, Boudreaux. Yeah. Um, Cooper, like Cooper don't, Cooper puts off, he don't know how to rope. Cooper went to the high school finals and high school nationals in every event. So really, he I can didn't play know that. I didn't either. I, yeah, I, he, you know, when I see pictures of him at home, he's in his dress slacks and yeah, and penny loafers and stuff. Like, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, wait, what happened to the he cowboy like right here? You know, you, you you look like you're ready to go to uh, to the formal dinner or something somewhere. Yeah, he he can play like he ain't a cowboy, but Coop's a cowboy. I he see. just that's he's a Beverly Hills cowboy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you uh, think? But you, they're still this, there's still them guys that are cowboy, you know, like right. I think, hell, I think Dalton's actually probably working cows right now. Well, coming from um, Mule, Mule Shoe, Texas, what the hell do you do in Mule Shoe other than work on a ranch, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you think they will ever go back to Vegas? Right. Huh? Do you think the PBR World Finals, the UTB, the go buckle year or season, go ever go back to Vegas? Or do you see the team, uh, the don't. team series rolling on through and – I think the team series is there to stay, and because the PBR's headquarters are now in Fort Worth, like Fort Worth is the home of the PBR. Really? So I, didn't know that. I didn't. Know I don't. That either. I don't. I don't see it ever moving again. Um, but boy, I sure am gonna miss them up all night. Yeah, up all night right. over there. Me and Dalton. That's just what we. That's something we enjoy doing. Like. We're not trying to be cool. We're not trying to s- let people see us to be like, "Hey, look, they're still up. They're still." That's something we enjoy doing. Yeah. It's Vegas. Yeah, we're there to have Comes fun. Once a year, ride bulls and win a shitload of money. Mm-hmm. Like, so we're sitting there enjoying ourselves, having trying a couple not to lose drinks. it on the tables. Right. Like, I mean, we're trying our luck on the tables, and that's where last year after the team series, 
That's where my bachelor party was. So I had me. <laughs> like, we just, Austin Richardson, he, I think Austin won 70000 that week. Good yeah. gosh. Like, on the card tables. I wow, mean, he wow. just was having them. Like, wow. That's good. That's just I ain't what never we got enjoy. That in Vegas. I paid the light bill a time or two. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, at the South Point, man, they, they took care of us. And that's yeah. just, we miss being able to have them memorable times right because yeah you can make memories in fort worth but fuck we've been making them memories in fort worth since we was 15 yeah well see <laughs> yeah well yeah in, in vegas you know you'd have you know when i was out there we would have meet and greets and and stuff and it was all everything was condensed right it was all nice and tight right there you go to the pbr finals in fort worth you may have drive 35 40 miles to get to an autograph signing or promotions or yeah. it just seems like everything's more spread out in Fort Worth where in Vegas, it was all right there. It was always at a casino or a hotel or something. Yeah. And Cause now the fan zone is at the stockyards. Yeah. The world finals and where we stay is at Dickie's. It's yeah. nine miles down the road, 10 miles yeah. down the road. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it does kind of suck. The like, expos when you have and stuff is in Cowtown, you know, 20 miles away or 15 miles away, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's all good for the right. sport. Don't get me wrong. Like, we're expanding, and it's right. all good for the sport. All right. You say it's but, good for the sport. You Now you've got a – instead of a 12-month or 11-month season, 12, 11, 11, 12-month season, whatever it was, and – but now they've split it with two series. You know, you got the UTB series and you got the team series – Splitting it, yeah. But they've condensed the 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 Go Buckle series, UTB series, down to what six months, something like that. To yeah, right. They that's... got the same amount of events. There's no time in there to heal. There's no time to get no. um to, to get healthy and come back. I mean, I, I broke my collarbone in in Laughlin, and we had a week off. Luckily, we had a week off, and then we went to Calgary, and I missed Calgary, so I got to come back three weeks later, and we went to Columbus. Now I would have missed what instead of just missing one bull riding, yeah. I'm, I would have missed like three. Three, yeah, yeah, you know, and that that could possibly in a tight points race, that could take you out of the out of the cup, you know, out yeah. out of the race, yeah. you know. So is it is it turned into more who the hell can stay healthy long enough? It damn sure has because, like you're saying, if you want to heal up, you have to make that decision. You're taking yourself out of the race, basically. You're taking or, yourself you know, out of somewhere. the race, or you're taking yourself out of just making the finals. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's so much that goes into it now. Like, yeah. because you do have to be a businessman. Mm-hmm. Okay, do I take care of my freaking body, or I'm right here freaking in the top 10 with so many points available? I'm in the conversation right now. Like, what do I do? Do I sit at home and nurse this sore growing, or do I wrap the motherfucker and I go and try to freaking win? Like, or do you I mean, get in the bind and check out to fight another day so you can continue? Exactly. Running? See, that's yeah. that's another thing yeah. now because it is such a six month season. Mm-hmm. Nobody does want to hang under one to right. get the whistle to because they're like, well, shit, I'll just come back next weekend and do the same thing mm-hmm. again. Like I can win next yeah. weekend. Yeah, right. but. I just do think that not being able to have a break, like we have two weeks off in a whole year now. Yeah, we have back then when it was month, full season. Yeah, you could you had the yeah we have the six month PPD. Now we have you know because everybody goes to Chad's turn pros. Then you have the whole team season, and then you get two weeks off. And mother freaker, the UTB starts yeah. at the end of freaking November. <laughs> yeah, bingo, like, you're right back even, at it again. <laughs> Yeah. It's at the end of November now. Yeah. Like, we're riding November, December, like last year. Well, it was either last year or the year before. I think it was last year. We had a bull riding the, th- the day after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We had a bull riding on Easter. Yeah. We had a bull riding on New Year's. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're jamming all of our events mm-hmm. in so tight to where now, yeah, you, you don't get no time off. You don't get no time at home. You don't get freaking nothing. Like, I yeah. mean, it's, you know, back in the day, you know, when, of course I was back in the stone age when the PBR got first got started <laughs> in the first couple of years, you know, you know, a lot of the PRCA guys were still going, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, come from the PRCA, they still want to try to make the NFR. 
Well, oh, yeah. so the the Fourth of July run is what three months normally. You know, we took that off purposely, and so they could have a chance to go make the NFR or heal up or whatever it wanted to be, and you know, so it was that's how that kind of got started, and then. Well, when JB won won his world title, wasn't it? He was he was hurt, got hurt right at the end, and uh, finally got healthy enough. And but he was he had been hurt the first half some. Yeah, and, and then, then he got healthy. They had that three month break there, and he got healthy, and then he come back and won what? Or was it Justin? He come back and won six events or five or no, it four was, or five it was, of it JB. JB. Yeah, and it just went yeah. on yeah. a killer won, run in that second half of the right. season, and 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 wound up winning the world title. But it was due because he was able to he go home and get healthy. It, it, with that condensed up. season, that would have never happened. JB wouldn't no. have had no. he, he wouldn't have had that go buckle. And shit, wasn't it? Was it Justin in two thousand seven when he won the world that just went to half of the events? Yeah, because he yeah. got backed up or yeah. something. Yeah. Like I can't remember. Yeah, but he jacked his shoulder up or something and sat out for however long and just yeah. come back and because you could do that mm-hmm. back then. Yeah, you, you got, yeah, there was time in there. Like there would, there'd be a week here or a week there, and yeah, you could come back and you have a shot at it. I just, yeah, that's gonna. It's, I think it's gonna take a hell of a toll on the guys. Just you know, just pounding it out, just never Did you ending see, and no break. I mean, I'm not just saying this because I missed the finals. There was shit at the time that I decided to get my hip fixed. I was in the top ten in the world. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like. I mean, you had a, when I just after, after the fact of the matter is, if you'd have been went into the finals in the top ten, you obviously would have had a shot at winning the world title because Rafael mm-hmm. Brito yeah. come in in tenth and, and wound up winning the Dagum finals, and nobody ever thought he would had a shot. Yeah, I decided to get it fixed because you cannot plan on Kaiki falling off or Kaiki getting hurt the last event mm-hmm. of the finals and not yeah. going mm-hmm. to the world finals. Yeah. I mean, number one guy in the world is out. Number ten guy in the world wins the world out. title. Num- well, yeah, how, I mean, how number- healthy was Jose at the finals, though? How healthy was he? I think he still had somewhat some issues yeah. or fading issues it's of of, of the growings, yeah. you know. Jose's um, growings, fuck. Yeah. Like it's not, it's and, not and, ever. And Cooper had had some yeah. issues. I think Cooper had some growing problems, growing problems um, and stuff. And he was just getting over what a shoulder or something yeah. before yeah, that. Then, so it was still recovering from that. And then you get this growing injury and. But it's all that's due to the condensed season. Nobody could take time off to heal and, and come back. And I think, you know, I think that hurts the PBR's product a little bit. If you looked at it, if you really did look at it, I want to say ten out of the top twenty guys were out because mm-hmm. of injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got no like, time to rest. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dalen, I mean, Dalen was out. Dalen Come back and contend in his yeah. world championship. And he, yeah. he, he elected to go get fixed uh, like three events into the season. Yeah. No, I, if, if that's the case, then yeah, then you've got it, – it would be kind of – you wouldn't want to make that decision at the middle or the end of the season because that would take you out of it. But if at least yeah. at the first, you could have a run at it maybe. But, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I I wonder if the PBR is the PBR looking at that. Have they can do, do you hear anything from the PBR? Do they tell you guys, hey, we're thinking about doing this, you know, or what do y'all think on we're going to condense the season down and we're going to do, you know, is there any communication? I don't want to piss nobody off because you know that <laughs> it don't do no good when you're still going in the locker room and having to be around everybody. Oh, absolutely. They don't give a, they don't give a shit like. They're doing what's best for marketing for the PBR to make money to keep going, yeah. which I don't know that side of it. No, I I, ain't I, no, no. I got a high school diploma and that's about it, man. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I, didn't, the, I didn't get ain't. to all them fancy degrees. But. Yeah, not I don't I don't know that side of it. None of the other bull riders know that side of it. I think the only one that would be qualified to even know anything about that is fucking Cooper. Yeah, <laughs> he, Cooper, you know. Yeah, I mean, he's that smart and that much of a yeah. businessman he could probably understand it but i don't right what i i just you know like they're probably doing what's best for the pbr to make money but in that what they're doing is best for the pbr to make money they're killing all it's the not, great it's guys not necessarily off. benefiting the bull riders you know without it's not benefit bull riders one bit and now you have guys to where 
it's not so hard to make the PBR finals as of late. Right. It's not I, so yeah, hard noticed, to get the top I noticed that. Five. Yeah. And obviously, like, if you can yeah. come in and tenth, it's not that hard to win a world title either. Be healthy and yeah. pretty decent. Yeah, it's like without the board. And I'm not taking PBR. away from DeBrito because he went in and did what he no. had to do. He and and, 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 and if he was going to be if he was going to be honest, I guarantee you he didn't think he had a shot at winning the world title going in and tenth. No, no. Nope. I guarantee he didn't think. And and none of the commentators, nobody really even give him a shot because everybody was focusing on the top three or four guys. And look at the math too. He didn't ride very many at the finals either. No, what did he ride four or seven or something, something like, like that? that? Yeah, and he rode more than everybody else. He rode four. Yeah, he yeah. Won the finals. <laughs> That's how yeah. bad it was. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, that was the point. I'm glad you caught that point because I was like, yeah, he rode four. Really? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I guarantee you, when they had he had six, uh, but we had to get on six bulls a couple years when I was going, and I'd ride two or three, and I damn sure didn't have a shot at the title. <laughs> you know, I rode you, you five out of six and took third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Dang. Like, I mean, that was with a year-long season. If they can't compare apples to oranges, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just not that smart. I don't guess because when you have a full-length season for everybody to get healthy, which I understand the team you deal, you can't do it with the team series now. But could you shorten the team series? The whole year, you have there's three guys at the World Finals that ride five out of six. Me, Jose, and Kaiki. We rode five out of six bulls. Mm-hmm. The guy that took fourth, Eli, was 90. He was the greatest story at the World Finals, riding with busted up ribs. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Riding with a shoulder fucked up. And that's a storyline. People yeah. love storylines. People Absolutely. wanted to see. They were they were cheering more for Eli than they were for me and Joe Say. Well, that the was PBR one punched two. that, and rightfully yeah. so, because they wanted to build the, the, you know, build it up and and get it going and and have that story yeah. to really commentate and talk about. Because really, all commentators yeah. do is try to make something out of nothing and talk. You know, yeah. Talk, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's not the four bulls he rides out of six. He's no less than ninety on. Mm-hmm. He's north yeah. of ninety on every one of them. Yeah, that's a that's a selling point. Like Ray yes. Corder did yeah. that one year. I mean, I'm an Eli Vassfinder fan now because I, I got to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I mean, there's just I, – I feel like that there's not that hype no more. There's not that – there's not that uh, – oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The fireworks like that no yeah. more because now you're just fighting to stay healthy mm-hmm. enough to ride four of it's, them at the it's final. It's diminished the product ride, because yeah. everybody's hurt and, and, and not coming in and – and they're not, and the bulls ain't giving y'all no breaks. They're them. Shit, you know, no. They're if dragging. anything, they're bre- freaking harder. Yeah, better yeah. and you better. Know? Yeah, and it, it like ain't I no easier that the way. Day of a two-year-old almost landing a front flip. If yeah. they start landing that shit, how in the <laughs> frick you want me to stay on that? Like you know, there's the always saying. If you ride them like they're going straight, you should be able to ride that some bitch doing flips. Yep. We never thought one that's, would be landing it. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That you got a point. True. They're breathing the shit out of them. They now. are. <laughs> yeah, it seems like somebody told me one time, too, say if we don't start raising bull riders like we're raising bulls, uh, we're going to go down. Maybe we get Troy D, Troy Dunn to, you know, with – you know, cross it with Jess Lockwood or somebody, you know, get, get, get a breeding <laughs> program for the bull riders, you know, start breeding yeah. these things. But um, – yeah, I think this has been a great show, Mason. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you very much for having good me luck, on. It was good a- luck with your season, man. And uh, tell Justin I said hello. And uh, who do you think is going to win? <laughs> the team season? Yeah. 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 Who do you think is going to win the team season? Who's your pick? We got we to gotta defend something. There you go. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew the answer I just had to ask. Mason, yeah. I appreciate you coming on, Pods. I think it's been great and look forward to it again. Yes, sir. Thank you, Cody. Y'all have a good day. You You bet. Thank you. You do. Yeah, man. So, there you go. You got Mason on here talking about all this. I think it's a great episode. Um, Oh, yeah. Shoot. You you know, if you guys out there, y'all like us, go to to Instagram, Facebook, give us a like, give us a comment, subscribe. Until next time, keep them bootstraps tied on tight and hang on. We'll see you next time. See you. See you.